Yeah, it didn't he have the the orgy with the with the prostitutes where he had them dress up as Nazis? Josh, I, we need to confirm this. Yeah, Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to the second first episode of 107% Factual Formula One. Joining me in the studio today is. Hi, I'm Josh Sherry. I'm Evan Kearns. I'm Luke McVeigh. So, gentlemen, first week of testing. Uh, we're kind of well, half, it's a half week. Half, half week. It is testing. a half week. Yeah. It has a half week. So, uh, if anybody's noticed, we're currently snowing in Barcelona, much as it is snowing outside in Ireland. It's worse in Barcelona, but it looks like this morning. It looked much worse in Barcelona it was this morning. It looked like it was absolutely. Fun. I was, I was, I was hoping some of the cars would actually come out. Like I know a few of the cars did come out in the running, but it was during rain. I was hoping to come out in the snow so we could get some great desktop photos of like the fucking like orange McLaren snow with Rister snow James. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah just run down to Aldi and get some snow chains, and away you go. There Force, was a yeah. Of Force India, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Force India put like snow chains on their tires. Josh, have you got hairpiece? What? <laughs> yes, I have herpes. I have herpes this week, guys. Okay. What? Oh, God, Look at his face, weird. like. Sorry. Yeah. He looks happy. He looks happy. Okay. No blue I love the way how week. close Luke is sitting just oh, like so close. Thank God we've been here. He has now. to be loud this week. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, we've come up with an even worse agenda this week. Oh, yeah. Do we have an agenda? No. Well, it's not printed. It's not printed. It's on my phone. Mm. Okay, let's go. So we're saying, first of all, should testing be moved to Bahrain? <sighs> I like the idea of it being moved to Bahrain insofar as the temperatures are uh, going to be. in 09, didn't they? Did, did, did the testing bar in like last year? Yeah. The year before? Was it last year? Yeah. yeah. No, it was 16, wasn't it? Last year was like the first year of it not being back there. Yeah, they, they used to split. It used to be between Haret and, bar, and Bahrain. Yeah. Ah, yes, you're correct. You're okay. It was, yeah, it was split between Haret and Bahrain. I have one issue with that, though, is that Bahrain's a boring track in terms of testing a car. If you want to get something like that gives you solid aero data, you want to go to somewhere like Sochi, where there's like zero elevation change across the whole track. Or you want somewhere like Barcelona where you've got uphill braking, downhill braking, fast corners, slow corners. Like it's got it's got an array of everything an F1 track could have. And generally speaking, you get up to 30 odd degrees during a test session. Just so happens to be snowing this year. It's 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 a good test track. It's a good qualifying lap. But it's a terrible race track. But then terrible. is that going to be the case this year with the new the, surface? Last year's race was amazing. Actually, yeah. As was 2016. Was, well, no, that's only because Hamilton and Rosberg crashed into each other. And 2012 when Alonso won. Yeah. There's been oh, a few yeah. amazing races. There's been a few amazing, but usually it's procession. But yeah, they have got a new surface. Yeah. In general, it's been a procession, but just for some reason recently it has been. What's the quickest time so far? 119.7 by Vettel? Yeah. Yesterday. Uh, fastest in testing last year was 116. Wasn't that 118? No, 118.6 oh, by Kimi. I think it was 118.6. Uh, yeah. oh. Pole lap was 119.1. Yeah. Because they were on softer but compounds. Like, it's very cold. Yeah. It's three degrees today. It's ever so cold. It's ever so yeah. cold. I'm sure the cold isn't really as bad as the wet track. Like. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think teams are being very cagey about showing their hand I mean there's so many more battles this year than there was last year between the Reynolds uh, Reynolds so type the Reynolds it, Reynolds there's an A-U-L-T and S in there speaking of Reynolds they're actually I think they're looking good they're looking fucking unreal they're looking quite good not not the end like they're not just the engines they actually like the works team actually look alright if oh. I was Force India I would be scared what's worrying me about yes. it is that they're tactically planning on using a fourth <clears throat> engine I think yeah. all teams will. I think, like... Oh, yeah, tactically planned, absolutely. Mercedes, maybe not. What is the penalty for using an extra engine? Uh, back of the grid, isn't it? It's not template. Yeah, it's, I think it's back of the grid. I think it's back of the grid oh, now. Oh, full... Because you get everything, because you have yeah, the five yeah. parts of the <coughs> PU, and it's five... What was it, five places? It's per? once... Uh, after ten, it's back of the grid, and then it replied in that order. Yeah, okay. So, a lot of people are confused over the 2018 ones. But I don't know. I think as far as I know, they've made it better. Made an actual yeah. video to explain all the rule changes. Yeah, <laughs> the, the as he slowly leafs through the photos. <laughs> got to me. Yeah. You can zoom in. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't I wave at the camera. Yeah. 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 That's the only person who looked yeah. at the camera. Yeah. Right, We've all just hey mom. <laughs> it's my big day. Um. <laughs> Sight, Logan oh. Paul. <laughs> no. See, maybe we need to record a dead body and then we'll shoot to fame. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. Oh. As ever. Well, talking about dead bodies, Max Mosley's been in the news. Oh, God, Josh. So. <laughs> Enlighten us. Star, yeah. Okay, well, I, I don't know if you know much about British politics, but the Daily Mail love ripping on Labour. Right. Okay, I think I think they're owned by the 
a Tory. The Fox Mogul. Oh, no. yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, Murdoch. Yeah. Murdoch. Yeah, Rupert Murdoch. Rupert, Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch. Correct. Yeah. So they take every opportunity they can to rip on Labour. But it turns out Max Mosley uh, funded a leaflet from a 1961 by-election in which had racist comments. Uh, they were basically saying that immigrants may bring disease, tuberculosis and basically other diseases to the, to the people of Britain. Well, uh, and this was in 1961 and he was in Channel 4 today doing an interview where he he struggled, he, to say the least. What position has Max got in F1 or he FIA? He used to be the president of the FIA. And and then he, there were some photos happened. and things with Nazis and he had a good night out basically. What? Things with Nazis? Nazis? Yeah, the, the didn't he have the, the orgy job, with, the, with the prostitutes where he had them dress up as Nazis? Josh, I, we need there to confirm this. That's going. This was years ago. Yeah, no, that's, check, like. Who farted? <laughs> Me. It's fucking disgusting. What? Have you been drinking? I've not been drinking. I ate a uh, Max Mosley. I ate uh, what Nazis. is it? Spiced chicken and red tomato. Well, I suppose any other right, part, tell you. Yeah. Red pepper yeah. and tomato rather. The orgy that Max Mosley wants to censor. Ah, is there anything about Nazis? So this is from the Daily Mail. So oh, again, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail really Sick Nazi that. orgy with five source, hookers, uh, apparently. Okay, fair enough, Josh. Josh is right. Max Mosley had an orgy with... <laughs> five Nazi dressed. hookers. No, they weren't Shut Nazi up. hookers. They were hookers dressed, dressed up as Nazis. They weren't actually a member of the Nazi party. Well, well nobody, nobody, nobody has been since the 40s. Like. Well, we haven't proven that. We're not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Max is a bit to answer for so, there. So Max is a bit to answer for. He but, is a bit to answer for. But look, it's, the, it's good to see he's back in the news. He's... he's he hasn't been he seen in a long time. He's back in the loose or something that happened. I didn't that I long ago. Dead, to be honest. It doesn't matter though. Like it was a bit of a bollocks. He's still a bollocks. Like you shouldn't yeah. be doing that. Like come on. Like it, it, it's who who goes out and parties with people dressed up as Nazis. That's Maybe this happened really years ago. Bad, it's strange. It doesn't matter. It's only twenty years after the war when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's really bad. That's really bad. <laughs> That's worse. Like let, let let's get look. Past I thought you're not topic. allowed. I thought you're not allowed to discriminate against people's sexual orientations. Josh. Josh. <laughs> Josh. God oh, almighty. No, no, please, no please, not in this well, podcast. <laughs> not okay, in this lads, podcast. Lads, let's let's keep going. Now, th- this is kind of like a double topic now. Okay. McLaren on reliability slash Honda reliability. Oh, that Honda. Two different things. <clears throat> McLaren have been plagued by issues caused by too much power. Is that what? <laughs> Think about it, right? <laughs> they, their exhaust was melting, and their wind nut came off due to unknown issues. In other words, they provided so much lateral thrust through so the tire it went. Pew! But it, like you said, they have too much power. Brendan Hartley has said that um, last year's Toro Rosso had the same engine as last year's. No, last year's Toro Rosso had a Renault engine. Last year's Toro Rosso had a Ferrari engine, had it not? No, Renault. No, it was Renault. Was it Renault? Yeah, it was Renault. Oh, okay. But he, he was saying that. This year's Honda engine has more power and it's more drivable than last year's Renault engine. So what do we get from that? Uh, I say they're on par with uh, Williams. Who? Um, Toro Rosso. Toro Rosso Honda are on par <coughs> with Williams Mercedes. You see, terms, Josh, Josh this is very different to what we thought last week. It is. We've yeah. changed. Yeah. Testing changes everything. Like mm. It's all so out no, the window. No, I didn't really. Cyber is still a shite. Sauber it looked terrible. Not good. We 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 hyped them up. Yeah, we did hype them up. I didn't hype them up. I said they were going to be crap. I thought well, we were all so back excited because we got Charles Leclerc. We've got the white and red Sauber, and then Leclerc bottles it in what turn four. But I got some interesting yeah. piece of news today f- coming from Alfa Romeo Sauber. What is it? Go on. Oh yes, this, uh, yeah. yeah. Have you it's brilliant. Uh, no, this is brilliant. Kimi Raikkonen and Sebastian Vettel both drive brand new Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifolios. They are yet the Sauber cars. drivers don't. What do they drive? Don't know. It didn't. It, it didn't say. They didn't say what they did drive, but they told us what they don't drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, so Alfred obviously clearly doesn't feel that their cyber drivers are worth the hundred thousand euro. So what you're saying is Ferrari. Ferrari they might get a two liter diesel down the line. That's V6 in that. Is that hundred thousand? Yeah, they're about 100,000 in, 100, in Ireland, where Virginia we have very high Hawaii vehicle registration tax. Virginia Quadrifoglio? Really yeah, 100,000. I, so, Ma- I was speaking to the Alfa Romeo dealer right. here in Limerick. He, not worth it. Absolutely worth it. God, no. Like, what's that? That's so what Ferrari, money. what Ferrari are saying is their car, their, their drivers don't deserve Ferraris like, if Alfa's drivers don't deserve Alfa's. No, Ferrari are saying their drivers deserve Alfa's because Alfa can be marketed to a poorer man than a Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah, but they're Ferrari. They don't care about poor people. Uh, yeah, but do. as a daily driver, Fiat does. Fiat cares about poor people. Fiat do, but Ferrari don't need to market. Like you look at television adverts, you see Audi adverts, you see 
so many Toyota adverts. Well, you, you, you don't see Ferrari adverts. You've answered your own point there. They don't need to market. They don't need to advertise, yeah, so need to to advertise the Alfa Romeo. Yeah, you don't need to market That's going to be Ferrari. as bad as clicking Every, the pen. Stop yeah, playing with the paper. It's natural though because it's in paper. Every it's Ferrari that is released paper. gets sold out in minutes. Ferrari are so marketable at the minute. They just, they, they, they don't deflate in value. They're in the... And they're only marketing tool they use is Formula 1. Yeah, sorry, they don't deflate, they inflate. <coughs> uh, it's actually cheaper to own a Ferrari than it is to own a Toyota Corolla. What about a Ferrari California? I mean, I, I'm I going like to say no to that one. Jay-Z is ripped around the hills. Like. This isn't F1. It's no. Ferrari related. <laughs> it's not, let's, let's get back, back, yeah, let's get back let's to Let's topic. get back to F1. So, <laughs> are, are, are Toro Rosso going to be McLaren? No. You've heard no, here first. No, no. I, I still God think God McLaren no. are capable of winning races this season. I think so. I Lando's going to win a race not Australia like you're well, audacious did you see Eric Boulier's like, face when he did they not want to tell me full of confidence today I see, we've yeah, seen he did him not talking look to happy. Ted Kravitz yeah he never looks happy though no he doesn't he's such a boring dry shite <laughs> <laughs> can't he's say that, that. Mm. he is he's not though Zach Brown is far more interesting Zach Brown actually he's this is this is what was bringing oh, me on no. to the point right Zach Brown is like I'm here to find us sponsors. And what <laughs> does he do? <laughs> We're doing great. They don't have a sponsor. And instead of him driving around in a McLaren to advertise, he's fucking driving around. In a Range Rover. In a ra- no, yeah. Range Rover. He's, he's being driven around he's in being a Range Rover. Rover. So not only does he not drive a McLaren, yeah. they're paying somebody else to drive him. So after, the, and presumably it's an executive <laughs> level Range Rover, how many fucking marketing people could they employ to find a sponsor if Zach Brown wasn't being driven around in a Range Rover I mean I would do the job for the money that the driver of the Range Rover is getting yeah but we all would to be fair <laughs> yeah. have, who's, have you seen the meme having worked as an aerodynamicist I've probably worked for less than what he's getting paid <laughs> he's what the driver is <laughs> and he gets to drive a Range Rover have you seen have you seen the meme from McLaren's launch last year where Zach Brown says I'm pretty sure we're all McLaren fans here if there's no McLaren if there's, if there's anyone who isn't a McLaren fan can he please leave and then like so a couple of seconds there, some, lad, like, some lad like kind of like Crouches over and sneaks out past. It's, it's brilliant. It's like I'm not a McLaren fan. Bye. We'll have a lot more fans but um, so I'm, I'm assuming we've all been watching the McLaren documentary on. on we've all Amazon. watched yeah, it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty good, guys. I mean, so it's quite good. Grim. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know. It. It, it, gets, it gives reason for hope. Does it? Yeah, I, I I fully believe they can beat factory Renault this year. Yeah, they'll beat Toro so They'll beat Williams. Could be they'll Rambo. beat Cyber. Well, with their budget, they should. I wouldn't be so sure of saying they're going to beat Red Bull. They could. You see, everyone's still living in the fairyland. They've got a bigger budget than Red Bull. No, they don't. No, they They do. No. Biggest on paper. Bigger on paper. Obviously, obviously, they don't have that money anymore. Real money. A few hotels and a bit of beck and champagne. Yeah. I don't know though. Like, what happens there? Like, they don't even want to lose the sponsors for the two races. Like, they're only there for nineteen races. I was just about to ask who sponsors Tara Russell. It's Red Bull. It's Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's literally the Italian thinking, for Red Bull. I was thinking over 30 seconds, like, who sponsors Tara Russell? <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. Wow. idiot. Don't speak Italian anyway. Oh, okay. Um, so, so going back to that, where last week we said Honda were going to finish last. Where do you think it's going to, where do you think they're going to finish now? I think they're Third looking better. Last. Third last? Yeah. Who's going to be second last? Williams. Do you think oh, so? Oh, I think oh, Williams. Yeah are going to be second last this season yeah. but Claire Williams in Ted's Ted's notebook was saying that it's Paddy's car that's what she said yeah, it's Paddy's, it's, it's car, Paddy's car quote yeah that's one man the whole rest of the team is the same one that produced the car last year Ted seems quite happy with the car I, 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 I like Ted I listen to Ted Kravitz I like Ted Ted's great Ted's lovely I, I, Ted's lovely <laughs> I love him when he he, he always wears nice shirts and he's lovely shorts and he brings I love I, mid race when it cuts to Ted in the pit lane and he's got some story that oh sorry Ted we're gonna have to cut away from you now because there's a bit of on track action and he's always so he's always so okay I'll come come back to me in a few minutes or something <laughs> yeah I felt so sorry for him earlier on I was watching Ted's notebook from day two. And he was after interviewing Robert Kubica. Yeah. Uh, Who went faster he, than Sorokin. He did, four tenths, four tenths faster. Yeah. But Just the first thing Ted says is, um, how are you feeling back on track, uh, taking all your limitations into account? Uh, I know you have to shift uh, up and down with your left hand. Is there any other changes that the team could do for you? And Robert ate him. Absolutely ate him. He, he wasn't said, happy. He basically, but he he was eating Ted, but he was eating the whole media for basically uh, criticizing Robert's limitations. And Robert basically, was... all Robert wanted to say is, "Well, I went four tenths faster today. I went faster the last day." It's like, what else do I have to do? I think, I think Robert kind of 
regrets being so honest about his limitations. That yeah, he's angry with himself. Kind of major, major, major issue. Kind of he's he angry with himself. He's angry with himself for actually for giving away so much information. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then again, I don't think he deserves a seat. He, he does. He, he absolutely, absolutely no. deserves does not deserve a seat. Sorokin. He's not faster than He's Sorokin. not faster than Sorokin. He is faster. Sorokin's not great, I don't think. But no, no, Sorokin, Robert Kubica yeah, was never great. Than Sorokin, and I think he is in, even over a race distance. But Sorokin was never great, and now he's... <laughs> well, rich. No, Sorokin, no like, Kubica said, was never great, but now he's got problems. We've said this about Stroll, though. We said oh, Stroll was going to be shit coming in. Race winner, like. Yeah, but he was shit. He was a race winner when he had both his hands. Yeah, he still has both hands but he only won that race because because Hamilton drove into the back of Raikkonen. Yeah, he would have been third at best. He would have been third. Like he would, he's a podium man at best. Circumstance like race to race. Yeah, but you need more than one race win to be I considered a great. Yeah, like, people put Kubitz in this great bracket, and he's not. Hang on, Yarno truly only has one race win, and he is definitely great. Ah, he's is he? <laughs> Over one lap, maybe. <laughs> truly brilliant, he is. Oh, oh, good oh, one. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> Funny man. Uh, <laughs> what's the next point? <laughs> Gary Anderson being wrong as always. Oh, will you stop with Gary Anderson. He's always he said for the last two years, he said in 2017, 2016, that the Ferrari looks better than the Merc. And I think Ferrari have the quickest car this year. What happened in both years? At the start of the year, Ferrari did have the fastest car. And they fucked it up both times. And Mercedes won. Yeah. So he's the basically analysis wasn't incorrect. He said he said this year that the Merc looks atrocious through, ter- through the first like I was reading it through mm. turns 1 to 4 he's saying the Merc looks terrible so he's basically confirming that Mercedes are going to be 2018 world champions I don't care if they can see me clicking my fingers at you you need to stop <laughs> moving that paper <clears throat> but no um, yeah he, okay so he might be saying they're not great in sector 1 yeah. he, like has he what has he said about the rest of, I think generally he, he has to be a bit all he three can't. all <laughs> three sectors in Barcelona are the same they all start uphill and end downhill yeah, but sector three is very tight. With the addition of the but, but the thing is, sector three is a lot of. Everyone uses sector three as like this kind of basis to understand what Monaco is going to be like, and they usually say, "Well, whoever's quick in sector three should fare well in Monaco." Last year in Catalonia, if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, Mercedes were a lot quicker than Ferrari in sector three. Like sector three was Mercedes sector in Spain, but Ferrari then showed up in Monaco and they were a lot quicker than Merck. That was the <coughs> wheelbase, though, I think. I think as well as that is that Ferrari were born in their tyres a lot more by than Sectors 1 three. and 2. Mm. And then by the time it got as far as Sector 3, they had no tyres left yeah. on them. Um, what about Hamilton sacrificing time in his car for Bottas to continue doing testing for the Mercedes plan? Is that Hamilton being himself just not interested in testing? Or is he actually taking one for the team or taking one for himself? I don't know, to be honest. I'd have to say... When does his contract run out? Does he have a contract? Had he a contract coming into the season? Yeah. I think this is his... Is this he's his last year in the contract? Sign a new contract? Right, I don't think he'll sign then. I think he's going to retire. Lewis? Yeah. The end of this yeah. year. I, I'm saying he retires and his contract is he expires. Is retire at the end of this year or at the end of 2020? Nah, I'd say this year. This year? Yeah. Fuck it, go out in that's the blaze of call, glory. That's a big call now. Wait, five world championships? No. Oh yeah, yes. no, definitely not yes. five world yes. championships this year. No. He will Who's have. going to beat him? Vettel has a chance of beating him I we said the same last I, I, look, I honestly and hope, he has I hope Vettel does beat him but I just can't see it happening he's, Hamilton's too consistent he's got too but consistent if, if Vettel wins the championship Hamilton will not retire he I, will only retire on top I don't think no, Ham- I don't think, I don't think Hamilton's that kind of personality yes. Hamilton doesn't I mean, want it if he wins the championship he'll always try to defend it yeah he does, but he doesn't want he'll only try once he, he doesn't want to I don't think he wants to fade out like Villeneuve did or like Hill did we can't really compare Damon Hill and Villeneuve to Hamilton they've won World Championship well we can't really compare Damon Hill to him either because he got sacked by the, by the team after winning was he the sacked? Award. he was by he, Williams he was told by Williams like three or four races before the end of the season that he wasn't going to have a renewed the year contract. he won the championship the year he won the championship what? yeah see that's quite so interesting he would have had two he would have had Villeneuve's as well effectively He's better I still think that, like Hill's class was shown in that second place in Hungary like we knew in the was arrows still, yeah was still a good driver like. so go, going on that with Damon Hill winning the championship in 96 okay. it's funny like you look at 1994 he was running Schumacher close to win the world championship in 94 yeah would Senna have won the 94 championship no I think so no he had no points when he died yeah which is round three he had no points but yeah. but he was in pole for all three races yeah well, the first two were purely down to what his <clears> driving 
Were they? He got punted. Did he not break down one of them? He was punted his first corner in. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking excess. Subtle like. drinking. <laughs> Subtle drinking, like. <laughs> He's just having a sip of Oasis. It Even is right. Oasis. Oasis. It's Oasis. Yeah. Yeah. Smooth. It's a nice Oasis he's drinking. <laughs> Smooth Oasis. Straight from black. Okay, so... I've got a segment. Go on. Okay. Jo- got- oh, hold on, where's Josh's fact for this week? This yeah. is what I'm going to do. I've Excellent. got a day, a day in history. Okay. A day in history. Oh, cool. in history. Okay, okay, so... Oasis for this one, please. No. 80, 81 years ago, the Pau Grand Prix was held in France. Pau, yeah. <laughs> Pau Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, there was. Tr- it was won by the Maserati, uh, but the reason for it, Scuderia and Ferrari were due to race, but were stopped at the French border by Mussolini himself. What? Stating that no Italian team should race in France until after the meeting of the League of Nations on the 10th of March. So, basically, Mussolini stopped uh, Ferrari from winning the French Grand Prix in 1936. That is... Riveting. Oh, riveting. Uh, 19... I, didn't know, I didn't know Ferrari were racing in 1936, to be honest. There you go. Huh. Is that... F1? Ah. F1's very old. <laughs> no, no, F1 <laughs> didn't begin to 1950. Yeah, but yeah, uh, Grand, Grand Prix it was Grand Prix racing. Grand Prix racing's been on since, what, 1898? Uh, in 51 years ago today, yeah. uh, 1966, Ford signed a £100,000 contract with Cosworth to develop their new Formula 1 engine. The DFE. Oh. That was a good oh, wow. decision. Cosworth. That was a Brilliant good decision. decision. Yeah. And third and final fact of the day, Eight years ago today, in 2009, Ron Dennis retired as team principal of McLaren. And Martin no. Whitmarsh arrived. Correct. And he oh, ruined yes. it. <laughs> Didn't ruin it. Martin Whitmarsh loved Jensen Button. And it was so irritating. Like he was as their time as teammates, champion. Jensen Button outscored Lewis Hamilton. Yes, but Hamilton yes, beat him in two out of the three championships. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's the average well, it does, because if, if the two years... If the two years they were competing for the championship for two years, Hamilton won, Hamilton's obviously going to be remembered as far better. Not necessarily. No. Hamilton's better than Button, we all know. We do know it. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the best of all time. Like, if you're honest about it. I don't even say Button's better than Hamilton. Absolutely. At McLaren, yeah. Oh, so, at McLaren, oh, yeah. But McLaren, yeah. But overall, no. He, he won a race in a Over- BA or a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what he's that's better. A, that's a valid point. Canada 2011. I love the way, though, BA or Honda became Merck, effectively. Who did BA yeah, or Honda yeah. come, become before Merck? Braun. Braun. No, was that not, no, was that not Honda? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. just regular Honda. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Which used to be Benetton. So does this, is this what, is this what, is this pointing towards, like, Honda engine could eventually go on a streak of four world championships? Did the BRA no. Honda no. run a Honda engine? Yes, as in BA or Honda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's BAR? British, British American Racing. Yes. Oh God. That's a combination made in Dreamland. <laughs> Isn't it just? It's the Ally Powers. <laughs> <laughs> They've got, got British, British fucking electronics and American engines. Couldn't beat it. <laughs> that, that's almost as good a story as Red Bull. Oh, but Bulk this was during the going, V8 era, wasn't it? Yes. Well, the Americans do. V10 know era. V10 oh, era. Oh, okay. Oh, well, the Yanks do know how to build a V8. Yeah. Nothing else, though. And even at that, the V8s are the wrong type. They're cross plane as opposed to the other plane. I love how you're telling me this as if I know what you're talking about. Well, no, you have two types of crankshaft. You have the cross plane and you have the in plane. Oh! oh. And you know, oh. As, hold on now. This has been described in a motor in a motoring show <laughs> before, and said motor and fella, it, it went. It was like they used to fire on opposite sides at both times. So it was like. But because of oh, the, yeah. the American one then, because it uses yeah. a cross plane, it basically means it's... Can you do it for the viewers? It's easy. They can see that. Here. It's easier <laughs> It's easier to get it mechanically balanced, even though it's like slightly bulkier and shitter. And it goes yeah. like... Yeah, because V8 can never be and that's perfect why it, balance. That's why it burbles. No, no engine effect. Like, you need an infinite number of cylinders to cancel out every... Yeah, <clears> yeah but on that, have concept. you heard about this new Toyota engine? The no. two-litre petrol engine that's been developed that is yeah. mass production and is going to have 40% thermal efficiency... Right. Oh, okay. that's, that's not. That's Apparently, that's very efficient because the most efficient engine at the minute is, is the Mercedes F1, F1 engine. That's fifty percent. Is there a hybrid with that, or is that just purely the IC? Well, the hybrid does n- have no effect bearing on the thermal no, efficiency. It does. About the overall well, it does. Unit. Okay. Yeah. No, well, you're talking about the overall power units, the efficiency of it. No, no. Like it's in terms of Merck, they have the MGH gathering the excess heat off the turbo. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it would have a hi- some sort of hybrid built-in system. I don't know, but that is Toyota's main market at the minute is through through hybrids. It's their fastest-growing market. 
Actually, hybrid Toyota hybrids outsold uh, <laughs> diesel Toyota diesels this year so far. Nobody's going to buy a diesel this year purely because of what happened last year, two years ago. Leave well, Volkswagen alone. Well, concerning that most <laughs> capital cities throughout Europe are going to ban diesels by 2020. Was it Paris or Berlin? Which have banned Paris. Paris is starting first. I think they're actually attempting. Lads, we're going very off topic. Did you Did you read about Gasly ripping his? Um, it's it's foreskin. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's a sore dose. Oh. I'd say. No, it's because you'd say. I don't know. It's because they have like don't a have airfoil at the top. <laughs> of the that's only a recent development, though. Yeah, I see. I see you can't cut something you don't have. I seen Akon getting into his car. It just looks so awkward. I actually thought the halo was on a hinge where they could open it up. No, because then it won't be strong. And, but have and you throw seen, a bolt have you seen the size of him though? Like he's a gangly big fella. I know he's like Akon. I'm picking him. He's six foot one. There's not. He's very tall. <laughs> Earthquake guys, sorry. What you, you said last week he weighs no more than eighteen kilos. Quote. Dramatic 18. dramatic effect. Eighteen, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh. Well, what weight would you say he is? I'd say I nineteen. Say, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's had a he's had a good week of dinner. Yeah. Um no, it's about seventy. On the talk years. of dinner. He's not seventy, I'd say he's yeah, I'd say sixty nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. uh, <laughs> Actually, in talk of dinner, Van Dorn had a good dinner the last day. He KFC a party. Yeah. McLaren announced he was uh, going they, on lunch. They had chicken. No, McLaren announced yeah. he was going on lunch, Fuck and two hours later, he still hadn't come back. Yeah. That was the time. And then someone tweeted about it, and Van Dorn actually responded. Was, was that real? I think it was real. I think it was real. Yeah. I think it was real. So we we'll say <laughs> Reynolds. Reynolds have given Re- Renault, not Reynolds, as Josh would say. Renault. Renault. Renault have given um, Red Bull. An Did ultimatum. Is it an ultimatum? It's an ultimatum. It is absolutely an ultimatum. It's an ultimatum. I mean, if my woman gave me this kind of ultimatum, <laughs> I would be... I'd be frightened. <laughs> I think. Do you could, care to refer to her in a more polite term than your woman? The woman. <laughs> the woman. Uh, my, uh, sorry, I love you, darling. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the, my yeah, other half. The, so they, they have until May. Re- Renault have given Red Bull until May to decide whether they're going to stay with them. And I think, I think that's... It's quite aggressive from Renault because as opposed to their engine mapping scenario in Abu Dhabi because that was controversial. What was their engine mapping? We won't give Toro Rosso any maps so they won't finish ahead of us in the championship. Was that not, um, was that was that a retaliation from Brazil when Toro Rosso started uh, accusing Renault of sabotaging their en- sabotaging their engines because they knew they were going to Honda power for the following year? Well, because I remember Franz Tost was going mad in Brazil. Just a slight tangent, guys. You know what really grinds my gears? What? How engine partners in back markers move out of the way so easily for each other. I think something has to be done in this regard. I it think- ruins racing, especially towards the end of the Grand Prix, when you see uh, this fucking Hamilton coming up behind a Force India, and it just jumps out of his way. But like everyone is doing that. Like everybody's like, doing. Ferrari are traditionally known for. I was watching Absolutely. back from earlier on last season. <clears throat> Bottas just hopped straight out of the way of Hamilton's way, and he also did it in one other race. Bottas got out of Hamilton's way. Just like they were their teammates. Third. Their teammates. Yeah, but like it's his job. Come on, like yeah, their teammates. I'm race. talking about with Kimmy. No, their teammates. Their team orders are allowed, but I mean across teams. Yeah, it it cr- with with engine suppliers, should something be done by the FIA? I hit in terms of that. Yeah, yeah. What what what's your opinion on blue flags? I I'm a complete advocate advocate well, for blue flags. Three corners, so, yeah. three corners to get out of the way. Is it? Something like that. If they don't get out of the way within three corners, I think they should have a ten second penalty. They should because they're interfering oh, with the race. Yeah, well, mind three corners. It should be within ten seconds. As soon as as soon as a faster car is behind you, you should get out of the way. Lep and out. they should also get off the racing line as well. Completely. Ha- like you see it all the time. The faster cars have to actually go off the racing line to overtake. I'm sorry, but you're a lap down. You should you should have to give way. I mean, no. that loses a second. And within reason. I think you should be allowed to send them the long way around. They still have to but within three corners. No, no, long, wrong way, long way round. Yeah. Well, the, the issue. <laughs> L- long way round. <laughs> the, 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 the wrong wrong way round is the wrong way around. There's an issue with that, though, right? If you come into an S, and you you stay off the racing line from one S, and they don't get past you, you have to yeah. cut across that S then to let them round. They should just hit the gravel trap. <laughs> off the being there so should, shit. There should be like shortcuts. Shortcuts for the cars being lapped. They pull in here. Oh, this is a rally cross, and let, let them come through. <laughs> a, what is it? A Joker lap? Joker, is it they call yeah. it? That, it is there's a, a good topic we can talk about. That we should get five minutes. Ago, Bernie's Bernie's crazy ideas for F1. We can get ten minutes out. Sprinklers. Of 
We need sprinklers. Sprinklers, I think it's a funny idea. Sprinklers is like <laughs> fantastically... T- no. Mario Kart. Think about it, right? At okay. least Ferrari would know when it's about to start raining. They wouldn't just pull their drivers <laughs> in. It's now raining, the computer says so. <laughs> what, I, what I would be worried about is the likes of... When we had the race like Brazil 2012. Okay. And Vettel did like four pit stops. Yeah. Took on a set of inters in the dry, did a lap, came back in and changed again. If there was a random sprinkler scenario when, say two drivers going for the championship were out of phase with one another and they weren't directly racing it can influence the results it could influence the result of the race yeah. oh I'll be up for it early in the season Fitton do you want to run us by your NASCAR um, thoughts for Formula 1 my NASCAR th- oh yes oh this is a NASCAR good idea thoughts. brilliant so <laughs> for anybody who may be listening to this which I know is nobody who may watch NASCAR there is 36 odd races to the start of the season and then no sorry is it thir- yes 40 I don't know anyway <laughs> la- wow. last 10 anyway there's there's a number of races in the NASCAR calendar the number okay and for, the la- for, for like the last I think it's 10 races they split the field into 16 cars mm-hmm. after 3 races they break it down to 12 cars yeah after the 6th race it goes down to so there's elimination there's elimination every 3 rounds there's That's an elimination after every three rounds, there's an elimination of four cars. And then from the last 16, they get down to four cars. Well, at least the shitter teams get to save a lot of their budget. They do, yeah. And then for the last race of the season, four fellas can win the World Championship. Didn't you... Or women, if they happen to be driving, like Danica Patrick, but she was shite, so... Didn't you work out last year that Bottas would have been World Champion? Bottas would have been facing Raikkonen and going into Abu Dhabi. For the World Champion. Yes. Champ- now, that's quite a strange twist. Hold on a second there, though, just to explain how this would go. <laughs> yeah. So, in a 20-race season... Yeah. Uh, it, at the end of the <coughs> 15 races there we would pick off the top five drivers yes and that would be based on race wins and if not all of the top five had race wins you'd go then on points mm. so then from that you would have those five racers compete and the lowest finisher in every race is eliminated from the championship yeah. okay and they keep the, obviously the 15 before, or the, sorry the yeah the 15 drivers stay in their positions and then the next five are eliminated as a result of where they come it'd be very interesting for people who DNF and crash yeah, and yeah. what I'm saying like, it's like Vettel would have been out in Singapore then Hamilton would then have been Hamilton out then Hamilton would have been out in Mexico Mexico yeah and it would have been down to Raikkonen and Bottas no? it would have been down to Raikkonen and Bottas I mean it'd be great if Grosjean was like his early days <laughs> Just, yeah. he could pluck anyone out <laughs> well that's what I'm saying though and like, like that last it would encourage last lap heroism in the last few races of the season say if the, yeah. the likes of like Danny Rick or Max Verstappen you okay well last season my car doesn't have the ability to beat the Merck or the Ferrari on outright pace so I'm just going to go mad I'm just going to ball it down the middle like fucking five pit stops see what happens like run Can a we set of wets in Mexico the from the purists, <laughs> that's, that's manipulation the racing I'm a completely against it no hold on I'm saying keep the team championship the same scoring system okay so then in that regard the prize money isn't influenced by it okay. but for the fans your driver championship is influenced purely on it would promote Pop overtaking luck. It would no. It would promote overtaking. No, it's bad luck. I, I think it's interesting. It is interesting, but I think it's too naff for Formula One. It's, yeah. it's too naff. The problem yeah. is our season too short. If our season was yeah, longer, well, you're saying 40, 35 mm. races. That's yeah, completely different. Like it have to be done off points. Well, you could do it off every three <coughs> races. A driver, a set of drivers, is eliminated from the championship. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But if somebody had like a shit start to the season, you might see like Hamilton's out of the running straight away. Actually, he probably would have been if you go back to 2016. Yeah, but it's not an accurate reflection of the championship. But that's what I'm saying, though. The team's championship isn't influenced by it. So in terms of money, teams won't be affected. Yeah, but that's that's not what... Most F1 fans aren't team fans. They're driver fans. Uh, that's what I'm saying, though. Teams will like it because their money won't be affected but by it. But the fans won't like fans it. Fans love it. No, they won't. Okay, if you're, if you're like a Ferrari fan <clears> and all of a sudden, right, it comes down... Say, like, Raikkonen. Raikkonen, right... That gives Ferrari fans something massive to cheer about until the end of the season. Hmm. That oh holy fuck, Raikkonen might win this championship even if he's had a shit year. Because Evan, after but Singapore then, and Japan last year, unless you're a Lewis Hamilton fan, the season had died. And the thing yeah, is, right, number wait though, it also promotes solid finishes the whole year long. Why are you holding my hand? You're tapping the. He table likes you. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm tapping the table apparently. Um, so if you follow like. Out of that area, you would have to say from that that Raikkonen and, and Bottas were the two most consistent drivers last season. And that's a, that's yeah, a crazy right. thing to think about. No, Hamilton was the most consistent driver. He wasn't. He was. He finished in the points every single race. 
But he he would have lost out in the championship because of Vettel hitting him in Mexico. No. Yeah. yeah. But he had Vettel in Singapore. No, he didn't. Who had him? Somebody For had Stappen him. and Raikkonen. Oh, yeah, no, no, it was it was actually Vettel's fault. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Vettel was the one that moved. Start to the US Grand Prix <laughs> last year. What Ham- Ham- Hamilton moved against against Vettel. But they didn't hit each other. Yeah, but that's because third place. Yeah. yeah. Get what happened a few laps start. later? No, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the start situation. We're yeah, but it was we Vettel's fault. There was a crash. He hit. He hit Verstappen, and Verstappen had nowhere no, to go. No, because the only reason Verstappen and Ham- or Vettel came together is because Raikkonen was there and it was like a sandwich. But it was Vettel and Raikkonen's fault. No, if no, if Raikkonen didn't, it's no one's fault. It's news it just is. in. It's Vettel and news, no, news just in. It's Vettel and Raikkonen's fault because they both not, came across with a car in the middle. <laughs> so Sebastian so Vettel fucked his own Vettel championship. As Vettel. the as the presenter of this show, I'm going to stop you. Here's Josh, the first argument. What is the news just in? Yes. Good news, everyone. Continue. Esteban Ocon is 66 kilos. He's very wow. small. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing! Sixty-six kilos. Sixty-six kilos. I've had shits bigger than him. <laughs> I think you just did. I think you just did as well. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I am just so relieved that conversation's over. Yeah. Oh my god. Sixty-six. No, kilos. sixty-six. Ki- but like, but his weight isn't distributed well. How? How? Because he's long. He's long. <laughs> he's long. And you want a five foot one lad who weighs sixty-six kilos, and it's just with all no, in one. No, five foot lump. one, sixty-six kilo person is fucking fat. Yeah, no, but it's all in a lump. Like. He's still no. the same weight as no. As somebody who's like five foot one, you want them to be like 35, 40 kilo. Well, yeah, but like a five foot one, six six kilo person is gonna be better in a race car than a six foot one, six six kilo person. Not necessarily. No, I mean, factor of fitness and bring in physics. Their weight's gonna be <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> bring in physics. <laughs> as someone <laughs> who has a degree based in physics, as opposed yeah. to yourself, yes, I'm going to say you're chatting shit. <laughs> okay. Next point. <laughs> do, 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 do. I've got a quiz question. Okay. Who's the who's the lightest driver on the grid at the moment? Mm-hmm. At right now. Well, Kevin Magnuson. I feel like Leclerc. These stats are quite old. Leclerc. Kevin Magnuson. Be massa if it was earlier. Is Leclerc in I've there? Seen Kevin Magnuson must play. Leclerc is tiny. According to this really dodgy poster that I've just pulled off. Okay. Um, All the rest of. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel is fifty-eight kilos. Oh, no, he's wow. not. not I feel not like anymore that. now. Vettel okay. actually has a bit of a belly. No, he doesn't. He does. Not really. He's a dad belly. He comes dad home belly. after the race and he sits up, watches the highlights in BBC Sport and drinks a couple of cans. With which of his three <laughs> women, Luke? <laughs> yeah, which... <laughs> I was just thinking that. Yeah. Oh, Vettel bashing on this. I couldn't believe that when you said that last week. Yeah, that was ridiculous. No way Vettel has done no, that. I, I heard, had heard that on something, but since then I checked and yeah, it's incorrect. Okay. Yeah, it's Can I establish incorrect. the fact, okay, either they're wearing their headphones back to front or we are. No, it's... The cable's supposed to be in your right ear. I checked it. Okay, so yeah, you lads get switching. Why does it matter? I don't know. No, I d- no, no, I just... You are Evan. Evan is right. That this. Yeah, I'm right. always right. Yeah. My Ron Dennis no. sense was tingling. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Dennis. <laughs> have you have you noticed the carpet? It doesn't. What the spots are shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you're wrong. You're Josh. Wrong. Josh likes listening to himself back to front. It may say oh. that, but it's wrong. I'm listening, and Finton now sounds on my left. When I switch around the headphones, he sounds on my right. Yeah, so, I'm usually right. Either so. my brain wirings are messed up, which possibly that sounds much more likely. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I used to have a go. I used to have electric quad back when I was like four. And, I think, uh, I think it, the Oasis it had is no taking re- effect. It had no reverse. <laughs> but when you switch the battery around, when you put the red wire in the black wire and the black in the red, it only went in reverse. Electromechanics. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and at four years old, I thought I was going to be the most amazing engineer in the world. Oh, my and you do what now for the fans uh, I am a fourth year in economics and sociology exactly so oh. <laughs> please feel free to read my thesis on uh, cross border trade be Te- coming soon Josh tell us about the, the economics of Formula 1 how does it work does it work even? does it work it pay distribution fair yes should we support a communist Formula 1 no where everything, oh. is, where everything is red and yellow like Ferrari red and yellow <laughs> Or orange and yellow, as Evan would say. <laughs> yes. I got mixed up. I don't know. I was thinking of McLaren. And I, I mean, look, orange. if you want a communist Formula One, why don't we just, you know, they've got Watch no... Formula E. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Formula E is exactly... they've all got the same chassis, the shit, same... Well, they don't have the same engines. I mean, but they Formula E really should stop thing. building cars. Why not just run a Tesla Roadster or a BAC, mo- BAC Mono thing? Tesla are quicker. Was a BAC Mono? Electric? No, sorry. What's the Croatian thing? No. That n- killed him? The Rimac. Oh, the Rimac. Rimac, yeah. yeah. They should just drive them. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be far more interesting. It just be able to fucks off. At least they'd be just able to take a hairpin. I mean, them boats just can't take hairpins, and they only race city tracks, so it's just stupid. Ah, but that's just purely about 
operating people. on the technology of the powertrain. Like they're not, they don't care about. They don't actually. It's care for about the, the FIA racing. to feel good about themselves. Yeah, they not have to make F one fully electric. No Bernie Eccleston that. reckons Formula One has to go fully electric. That's Bernie point. trying to get his name Bernie into the media just, again. At some point, it probably will. I mean, I could just sit and listen to Bernie fully Eccleston electric. all yeah. day long. If, if once batteries reach an energy density greater than the fuel cell, yeah. yeah. Well, it makes sense anyway. Yeah. yeah, but at the end of the day, if you look at the range of electric cars from the late 1800s, they haven't come that far. They I haven't, mean, no. Electric cars in the 1890s speed, the speed is come on were doing right, 120 yeah. miles of range. Yeah. I mean, that's what a Nissan Leaf does. The new Leaf or the old Leaf? Old Leaf. The new Leaf's very pretty. Have you seen it? No. It's like the Pulsar. I see them <coughs> around Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's, like a, it's like the new Pulsar. Would you have one? Electric. No. I probably would. Would you? Yeah. Jesus. Uh, oh, we should clarify for the listeners that we resolved our PSI bar. Uh, oh, we did, yeah. We did. Yeah, 14.5. I, I don't. 14.5. My guess was 12 to 14, The listeners so don't care. It was close. The listeners don't care about PSI and bar. Just because you are the least mechanically minded. <laughs> and yes, being. I might as well be talking about a Mars bar when you're speaking of PSI yeah. and bar. Yes, Josh, I understand. <laughs> Do you, though? Look, anything can be mended with a hammer. Is there too much caramel in a Mars bar? No, they're not enough. There's, there's <laughs> too much be... nougat. Too no, much nougat. No, the, pro- the problem is, is that it's just it, like when it, it gets a little bit of heat in it, it just melts way it too much. It does melt. But I think if you have it any cavities at all, if you have any cavities at all in your teeth with a Mars bar, I don't it just cavities. gets into them crevices. Yeah, like, yeah I don't have cavities. It hurts like shit. <laughs> yeah, and you're just gone. Like, <laughs> this isn't an ASMR show. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so actually, there's a team we haven't spoken about much. Is Haas? They have been fucking. So I forgot. Actually, no. Sorry, I correct myself earlier. Williams are going to come third last. Haas uh, is going to come second. Absolutely. Yeah. They changed their livery a bit. Their livery is nice. It's more horrible. white. It's not still terrible. It's still a paint Microsoft paint job. But they've changed it a yeah, bit it's nice, since though. launch. Nah, it's not. But the car is shy. Is paint Microsoft? Yeah. But it's no longer supported by Microsoft, isn't it? No. Oh no, actually they announced they're going to continue support. So, with Haas, Absolutely. with Haas, it's better than Soldworks. Who's going to win? Who won la- Who won the Haas drivers last year? It was Grosjean, wasn't it? It was to get the lineup. Grosjean Magnussen. Yeah, who won? Who beat? Who Grosjean. 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 Miles, Grosjean yeah. walked it. But do you not think it, Grosjean's a whingy? Yes. Hang on, think. He never you know that he's a whingy. Yeah, he's, but he's whining. come close to cheese race eating wins. surrender he has, monkey. But that was years. Josh, you can't Fuck say me. that has to be cut now. And I farted again. Oh, <laughs> no. So back, back to back to Grosjean. He wanted it's, to retire in Abu Dhabi with no, one lap to go. It wasn't. It was. USA. Have you seen the brakes in that car? What, what race mind. was it he wanted? Are they still Brembo? Aren't they? I have no idea to be honest. In USA, he won. No? USA last year, the last lap of the race, Grosjean comes on the radio and starts shouting. Oh, the vibrations. Say, vibrations. Are dangerous. I need to drive. Oh, oh. What the? What the hell? He says. What the hell? I need to drive. And oh, no, I need to retire. And the engineer turns to him and says, shut up over the radio. He says, shut up over the radio. Mm. Oh, he's a little bit too I was like, like. He's, And then Grosjean snaps back at him and says, oh, you wouldn't say the same if you were driving. You're not risking your life here or whatever. Just go to the flag, will you? What position was he in? He uh, was near the back. Was, uh, near the yeah. back. But he actually, he had a couple of good battles in that race. With who? People. <laughs> <laughs> His engineer. But speaking of engineers, now that Massa's gone... Uh, one of the more popular engineers was Rocky. Mm-hmm. Has he got a new driver? Rocky he- is gone. R- Rocky has traditionally always been Red Bull. Yeah, who's he with now? He's still with Red Bull. They got yeah. promoted. He's like head of like race day. He was. Was he Webers or Vettels? He was Vettels, wasn't he? He was Vettels. Yeah. Vettels, do you, yeah. Do you know the way like, Massa? Do you know? No. No, that's Smedley. Yeah, Smedley. Oh yeah, Rob Smed- Smedley. Yeah, so Smedley got promoted to his position, like how Rocky got promoted to his position inside Red Bull. So What's- whenever Vettel left, Rocky got promoted to like. Okay. The head of race engineers. He's like the two race engineers are now answer to Rocky. What position has Smedley got in Williams? Head Same position as Rocky, which is uh, sorry, head of en- race engineering, isn't it? There's something to that effect, yeah. yeah. So I heard something else about Williams about how the two lads are getting both of them getting two race engineers. That doesn't make sense. Well, too many chefs spoil the dish. I'm more sport Broth. Is there a dish it's to spoil though? It's already spoiled. It's already spoiled. Well, we, we, a, a guy with a gammy hand. Paddy Lowe was like trying to season it <laughs> and save it there's nothing wrong with the cami hand oh that's what I'm saying I'm saying it. Like, Kubitz is crap leave Kubitz alone no he's not good enough for Formula 1 he's too old Can we, I'm going to edit him out Let's edit you out <laughs> Jesus <laughs> edit your old doll out ooh <laughs> very nice okay so what else is new in the world of Formula 1 
what's on the agenda next? Have you seen the front of the Force India when you look at it from head on? The amount of strip. Here he goes to his Oh, well, I was this actually. Do I have actually, news no. on Force Will India. Fuck off with oh, them no. sheets. Oh, you bastard! No, we don't need the sheets. Go away. Go away with your sheets. Uh, news on Force India. <laughs> news on Force India. Continue, Josh. Yeah, they're having new side pods, Sorted. new front wing, and new rear wing for Melbourne. Uh, so they're only actually testing a new chassis. So their performance is not. Do you relevant. care to repeat all of that, second, please? This is all running Shut the fuck up, man! I'm going to kick you out of the next one if you don't fucking wise up. Go on. <laughs> Continue, Josh. Start again. Yeah. So uh, news on Force India. Uh, they have only been testing a new chassis. They're going to have new front, rear, and new side pods for Melbourne. So their performance times are pretty much completely irrelevant. What? New chassis completely? No, no. They have their 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 floor. Their chassis yeah. is is new. Okay, but everything else is is twenty seventeen spec. Like the body and rear wings, front wings, side pods. They're and all twenty seventeen they... spec. They'll have them for Melbourne. But is their engine twenty eighteen spec? Yeah. So at least though they could determine how much cooling they need. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, but again, they're using old. But that, pods. That's putting them on the back foot then for Melbourne because they haven't Big actually time, tested yeah. it. Mm. That's really bad. That, that's good news though for Renault. That's very good news for Renault. I think Force India are under the cosh. They're going. They're in. Tr- they're in murky they're waters. Major trouble. Yeah. They. they they they're basically aiming to match the performance last year, but they could very easily drop to third or fourth last, drop to seventh so in the constructors just like that. Gotcha. Where were they? they were fourth last year, and they're definitely not. They're st- they'll be sixth at best this I year. I mean, Williams could overtake them. I don't see Williams overtaking them this season. It's possible. It's not. It's, I don't. Their think car possible. has some some nice innovative features that I don't know anything about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's basically like a shit attempt at last year's Mercedes. Is it? Yeah. It looks. Like I'd have it. It's side pods. <laughs> It's bar cape. It's back cape. It's rear wing are all very reminiscent of last year's. Is that a long wheelbase? Yeah, all the cars are quite long. All the cars are quite long this year. Yeah. yeah. So it turns out Merck actually had the right idea last year, and we all thought they had the wrong idea. Well, that's because, as I said, from the first half of the year, it's it's very much a chassis. I circuit. think they're focusing on the run in. Yeah, the you got to focus mm-hmm. on the run in. Like I know, I know, like every race is worth the same amount of points, but the last, like the last few races, are more important. You want yeah, to get it right in the last few races. The last ten races are more important than the first ten races. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yeah, but if you fail to prepare, right you prepare to fail. Like. like Jensen Button in two thousand nine, I <clears throat> he won what six of the first seven races? Or was yeah. it? He yeah. Won who, who won? Who won the other one? Vettel, Vettel in China. Okay. He won yeah. six of the first seven races and then didn't win a race then for the rest of the year. Like Barrichello won two races in the second half of the yeah. season, I think. But Button still. He was still able to hang on and win the World Championship. But Vettel ran him pretty close, I think, in the end. Vettel was within, what, five or six points by the end of the year? By the end of the year. Yeah. Although Button did wrap it up with a race to go. He, yeah. won it in, he won it in Brazil. He did, yeah. He, that was actually a brilliant drive. But was it Brazil was the last drive. race of the year that year? No, Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Abu Dhabi, yeah. shite race at the end of the season. It was. Hamilton had brake failure from the lead. Then Vettel I won, was it? anything about it. We no, you never... Re- Do we ever remember Abu Dhabi? 2010 was good because six fellas could win the world championship going into Abu Dhabi. Wasn't that four? No, it was, no, it was four. It was Vettel. Oh, four, you're correct. Vettel, Hamilton. No, it was Vettel, Weber, Hamilton, Alonso, and. Yeah, it was those four. There was no one else. Vettel, Weber, Hamilton, Alonso, and who? No, that was just those four. You sure it was the Yeah, it was just those four. I remember seeing a photo of the four of them stood together. Oh, okay. And yeah, Alonso was, Alonso was favourite to win. He, with Vettel, with Vettel, Vettel was fourth in the championship at the time, wasn't he? It was, yeah, he came from the furthest back. He came win. from the furthest back to win the championship. Like, he, he didn't actually lead the championship for the entire season. That's the only day But folks, matters. as yeah. we know, Formula One can be a daunting <clears throat> sport to follow. Yes. For newcomers, as it is hugely sophisticated and difficult to understand in comparison to soccer or rugby, for instance. It Not is. to worry. Compared to rugby? Everything you Rugby's need to know as a beginner sorry. will be discussed in this post. And this is an extract from what I'm after finding on the internet. The Formula One corner, Evan Kearns' blog from 2015. How did you find that? <laughs> <laughs> How did you find that? Oh my God. The I was Google thinking it was mine. Formula One for numpties. Oh yes. By that, Kearns that, F1. That's the time he stole my Facebook group named for his I own project. Did, I did it by accident. You did it by accident. You I did it by... What do you mean you did it? That's you, his you sat down to write a history essay and you wrote this. That's <laughs> as accidental as the Williams Batcape. <laughs> no, the thing is, when I was doing it, you actually, when you when you commented on it and said, oh, I remember this. Something about the name. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh yeah, because, because <laughs> I remember there doing, agreeing with everything I, me- I was saying. I remember writing it and I was like, mm, dun, 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 dun. I was like, what would I call it? I was like, mm, Formula One corner, and then it finished. But for some reason, I'd obviously just looked at a post in your F1 corner, and yeah. then I just didn't 
you copied. I plagiarized horrifically. <laughs> you probably shouldn't say that before you've graduated. I have plagiarized horrifically. <laughs> <laughs> I handed in my FIP today. Did you? Congratulations. Did. Thank you. Wow. This is being cut. But nah, anyway, no. news just in. Continue, from, Josh. Uh, Josh is great with his news, Justin, isn't he? <laughs> He's actually giving us... I mean, I have no knowledge and it's all coming from my phone. Okay. But anyway, uh, <laughs> quickest and most laps on the... F- basically, what's probably going to be the final so day So who has testing. been the lappiest? Fernando Alonso in the McLaren. He set a lap time of 2 minutes and 18 seconds. That was today. Did no, he actually was, today. Cl- was he the only person who set a lap time? He was. <laughs> 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 so Honda being the most reliable and the quickest. No, no. 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 Oh, Renault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Renault was also the quickest in day one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, was Ricardo quickest in day one? Yeah, it's 120. Um, and Vettel yesterday. No, I was ranking him. Wasn't it? No, it was Vettel. No, it was Vettel, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. Hamilton hasn't done any running yet. Oh, no, he's done 20-something laps. Yeah. Yeah, Alonso set 11 laps out of a total of 16 laps across all drivers. Yeah. Well, at least they're catching up. I was reading, Tara Ross have like 170 laps. Let, let's okay. We, we need a bit of clickbait for our title. Yeah. <laughs> so, the Honda Redemption. The Honda Redemption. <laughs> for dramatic effect Dram- pause dr- dramatic effect yeah okay so should we save this point for the end no no I want to get in now because we can use that as clickbait okay. so H- Honda one of the one of Honda's biggest sin for the last three seasons has been that they were one slow and two unreliable now you can get away with being quick and unreliable because then you can make the engine reliable whilst quick or if you're reliable and slow you can make the engine quicker whilst keeping the reliability but when you're slow and unreliable that's terrible now coming into this season they look reliable like they've had they've done 170 something laps across the first two days of testing without a single problem without a single problem now I think they've got reliability kind of figured out I think they have reliability nailed I think they have it the car is slow do you not think the car is do you think it's really slow? well turned down like no, no. Like they're, no. Running, they're running three quarter no run a high in testing they're, find the problems yeah I think they're running at pace with the Williams Mercedes. I think they're on so it. around eight or nine. Well, the car. To be fair, last season a lot of people reckon the car was probably third or fourth best chassis on the, the McLaren. The McLaren was the best chassis, and then yeah. arguably the Ferrari. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. it was like a toss up between Merck and Red Bull for the next bits, and then it was Force India. Force right? India. No. But let's view yeah, it from this Carlos point of view. James how come? Yeah. How come most people, most teams have gone down the route of copying Ferrari? from last year but not copying the just the side pods. side pods it's just the side pods it's a fairly major part though of the car mm. it is oh, no, Have you so from people in the know they seem to think the Ferrari was one of the better chassis it, probably, it was a better it was, chassis yeah. than the Merc it was arguably the second best chassis yeah. have yeah, you seen why didn't they copy the M- McLaren side pods what do you mean the Merc side pods the McLaren M- you said McLaren are the best chassis yeah yeah why didn't they copy it? The chassis isn't necessarily the same thing as the... Side pods. Side pods. Side pods are more, aer- more aero-dominated. Have you seen what We're Ferrari are doing with their wing mirrors this year? Yeah. The They've got like... Suction it, holes. Suction it. holes to guide air into the side pods. Isn't no, it? it's not quite that. It's uh, because traditionally the mirrors have always been solid. So the wind buffeted over them. They've got them going through them now. It, mm. it passes. There's like two vents on the opposite... On like it's the very, v- very viewer side of the wing So it, it's obviously inside the mirror. It's obviously got a triangle shape to go around the mirror. Yeah. It just basically splits there in two and then passes okay. it yeah. inside the mirror. It reduces the pressure drag. That's interesting enough, actually. I thought I thought they were just guiding it because it looks as if there's a slot above on the flat surface of the crash structure on the side pod. It looks like it. Well, there be a stability yeah. part to it the same way like a parachute works. Kind of little kind of stabilising, so just like in, from the wind. Uh, it's better than a, than what's currently done. Yeah. Because at the minute you get a lot of the you get a lot of dirty air coming off the wing mirror, effectively going backwards, and yeah. they have to clean it up using the chassis. Yeah. Whereas I think now what they're doing is they're slightly creating a controlled vortex off the mirror. Yeah. And are they using that to bring air in to the, from the side, is it? No, I think it's just purely just to reduce drag. Oh, okay. As I don't think there's any like, massive benefit to be got. they from are it. very small, the overall. So there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of points in that new Ferrari that are just fabulous. There is a lot of subtleties in that. There's Ferrari. a lot of subtleties. Like the Merc, the Merc's very simple, to, but the Merc looks solid. Well, no, the floor in the Merc is mental. Yeah, and the barge boards, and it's all crazy. But like, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of things on the Ferrari that are very interesting. Yeah. Yes, but seen, will it be fast? Have you seen yes, it'll be, fast. It'll be have very you seen fast. What McLaren have been doing with the floor, uh, the big long slits. The slits. Yeah, what are slits for? Kind of vortex floor. generators. No, it's to control the pressure gradient across it's the floor. Do you remember what contract okay. used to do with the side of the car? It used to be little skirts. Oh, the so skirts for the ground. Like a really full version of that. For ground like, effect. Nah, it's nothing to do with ground effect. But is it not like the the, the pressure air is kind of like sealing? A little bit. No, what I that. think they're using it for is they're using the inside portion as their main floor, 
and then they're using the two like effectively really long strakes mm -hmm. to control the vortex vortices on the diffuser so these are the strakes running the length of the entire floor along the yeah. side pods so i think i think they're using it for some way of sealing the vortex inside the diffuser right Quite interesting actually so another fact from josh formula one tv pro what do we think it's a good idea the issue That's is really it's good. not available in territories that have a dedicated F1 yeah broadcaster well, josh it's, it's available in many many territories including Argentina, Austria, Azerbaijan, the Bahamas, Bar Barbados, Belgium, Bosnia, Herzegovina. Okay, many, stop. Many, You're many. going ABC. Basically, stop. it's available <laughs> uh, everywhere apart from the UK and Ireland. Yeah, yeah. But that's because we've got dedicated coverage from Sky. Did the US not have it? But they have ESPN. Oh, it's not available in Italy. Okay, there you yeah, go. Yeah, because Italy have Sky Italia. They have Sky Italia, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, it, I mean, it's amazing for, especially for fans of the teams lower down the grid that they can... Because there was many times when there was battles going on between Williams, McLaren, and Haas when we just didn't get to see them because they just sat on Lewis Hamilton all race long. Yeah, that was just very annoying. That, yeah, that's quite annoying. That that is quite annoying when you, you have a good battle on the midfield, and and you're looking at the sector looking, times and you're like, there's there's one ten separating three cars and you're like, why aren't why, you yeah. showing this? But then yeah. then again, that said, you do want to see the the front cars as well. Like, what what race yeah. was it? The Mercedes? Of course, but split the screen. No, I had, this issue, television. I had no. this issue about four or five years ago when I was following Cyber and they had Kobayashi and Perez. And Your issue oh. is that you do follow Cyber. Not anymore. <laughs> but, um, Kobayashi. You know, but you see, the thing is, like, they were always around six, seven, eight, nine sort of place. It's always been kind of. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> no, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. Six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> Fifteen, sixteen. <laughs> Seventeen, eighteen, the nineteen. That you, you saw they were changing positions the whole time. You're watching their sector times. You're looking at the timing thing on their phone website. Yeah, yeah. But, like, you just never saw anything of them unless, like, they were being, like, lapped by the front cars. Like, they're, it, I think this new broadcasting thing that FIA bring out would be fantastic. How much are they going to charge for it? It's probably going to be twice the price of whatever the WEC one is for the year. That's like, what, 100 odd quid? I don't know. I know the WRC <coughs> one is, I think it's 120 euro for a year's worth of access. I'd say 200 then. Yeah. And includes all the feeder series too. It's a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. If you think of what you pay well, for... Well, if you could pay it per monthly, it's 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 Amazon money. If you pay, if you pay, a, subscri pay Netflix. a subscription fee to... Uh, Sky Sports. Yeah. yeah, which is very expensive. Well, ones? I wasn't going to name them, no, but the F1 channel is like what fifteen euro on its own for the month if you have like an order. Can you get it on its own? You can get it on its own, yeah. Spanish. But you know, I think it's awkward. Like I know you've Chromecast and everything, but there's nothing more simple than just being able to sit down, pick up a remote, turn on the television, and get Sky Sports on. Do you really want to have, to have a laptop open and sit down, Chromecast it to your television, or stick a HDMI in it? Like I know it's fine when you want to do it, but sometimes it's just irritating. Like I have to do it. I have to watch. I have to watch. So my granny has Sky Sports. I don't. This is quite funny. I don't actually have Sky Sports myself. My granny has Sky Sports. I robbed my granny's Sky details, and now I use a Sky. Your Go granny's account. mad for the footy on a Saturday evening. With no golf. The thing I do like about NASCAR is it's a podium ceremony because it doesn't really have a podium as such. It's oh, they just do rings and get uh, Stetsons and some guns and go bang, bang, bang. <laughs> that's only that's only like the Texas race. Um, <laughs> They've the shot their own sign. <laughs> uh, the rest of them though. Um, they have like basically all the team get up on like a podium and then the car is like parked in the middle of it yeah mm -hmm. but I think though as a, as a change right there should be like the winning car should have like a ramp that it can drive up onto and okay. then it's parked there what like they do in rallies similar yeah and but, but higher confetti going woo higher yeah and then like, like what kind of ground yeah. clearance have these cars got <laughs> it's like 30 mil at less the rebels a lot at the back you know what is amazing <laughs> ground clearance the panda 4x4 better ground clearance than a than a Land Ro Range Rover Discovery. That's good. Land Rover Discovery. Yeah. Formula One. Completely useless information. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think you should be able to like put it up onto a podium. Like a NASCAR has got less ground clearance than a Formula One car. Mm -hmm. A NASCAR like basically scrapes the ground. It's, it's effectively in ground effect the whole time. I don't understand Liberty's. Okay, they want to break into the American market, but it's kind of linked to the Greek kids thing. It's like I like how they're trying to attract this younger audience because F one has a serious issue with uh, attracting younger people to watch per se like we're definitely in the minority at our age doing this aren't we <laughs> stop saying the word attracting <laughs> stop saying minority <laughs> you, 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 you. we're F1 fans we're different from everybody else yeah. what's the chances of uh, for our, of a breakaway sport 
and Ferrari and Bernie. Nah, negative. They're always on top. Bernie's just there. Rubbish. Bernie is on his knees to Ferrari, going like, "Come on, lads, we'll do it." <laughs> see, I mean, he's just there. He's like, "Come on." Do we'll, you remember? We'll Cam. be unreal, lads. We'll, we'll have sprinklers. We'll have <laughs> Joker laughs. We'll have, we'll have Nazi <laughs> girls. We'll be <laughs> everything. We'll bring Max. <laughs> we'll bring Max back. Let's get the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's just telling McLaren lads look we'll give you a Ferrari engine come on lads let's do it but I think it's like it's like Can-Am though Josh keep that Oasis in your mouth I've had too much Oasis today I've had too much Oasis had a lot of Oasis <laughs> you nearly think it was a week for raising and giving <laughs> oh Ooh. Um, oh god the smell of that Oasis <laughs> um but no, it's going to be like Can Am. Like Can Am was like, have this big engine. What as you want. is Can Am? Canadian American. It was a racing series, right? That had like <laughs> a million horsepower. So no, North America. No, way. no, no, no aero <laughs> Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, I've no, seen this. Bruce yeah, McLaren this was in the eighties, wasn't it? Yeah, Bruce McLaren got killed in the Can Am car. It okay. Was basically, what wow. it was, it was like, like Group B for open wheelers. Pretty much, yeah. Well, they weren't open. No, they weren't open wheelers. They were, they were, open they were like stock cars. They were, oh, yeah, really? But, but it was like fucking. It's the best touring car series ever. Was like, there was like Trans Ams and everything. There was, was like 1300 horsepower, nice. open cockpit, fucking go nuts with aero. No aero rules, no engine rules. Just show up and. You know who does a great montage your of it? Your, your guys, Donut Media. Have a yeah. couple of very good videos on on, on the why, why are you advertising yeah, another stop. podcast? Say they're not podcasts on the internet. Oh, whatever they are. Sorry, it's a YouTube channel. They're brilliant. Oh, okay. let's try get. We'll be, we'll be very, very F one. Yeah, very F one for five ten minutes. Let's get very F one. I can't because I have the meeting at seven. You have ten minutes. Okay, come on. But it's it's seven. Take, it, you're forty no, minutes. It's going to take a long time to save this. Well. Sure, you can yeah. do that. Okay, you can. I don't know. Okay, so. Well, not you anyway. If you're so anyway, we've team. we've had two days testing. We've had two days. Well, two days, two two full days testing. We've had today. Doesn't really count because they only did a couple of like, drive bys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> drive bys. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> who do we think of the two teams that vetoed uh, the extra day of testing? I think it's Merck. I think it was. It's definitely Merck. We can guarantee that. I think Merck. it was McLaren and Haas. Why McLaren. McLaren. <laughs> McLaren are doing it because. McLaren I think right think about it like this and I thought about it yep. everybody's saying they haven't run many laps mm-hmm. I think they've gotten so used to having a shite engine over three years mm-hmm. they've nailed down what do we need to know in testing to have the best car possible and I think by reducing it I think if you give McLaren the option to reduce it down to one day of testing mm-hmm. for the whole season they'll be happy they'd be delighted because yeah. they've figured out okay our engine's probably going to blow up after five laps we need <coughs> to know this 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 and this ASAP I think it's Force India why? Since they because, because they're, they're bringing so many new parts yeah. in Melbourne, yeah. I mean, how much testing can you do on a floor and a new engine? Yeah, the, most of the stuff they'd probably have done on a dyno anyway. And Merck's gonna have it nailed. Real life testing though is invaluable. Who's yeah, but but they're gonna gain less. You got to think, they're gonna gain less than other teams are. So let's just who cut are, it now. Who are we most impressed with in testing so far? McLaren. I would, I would say no Honda. Honda. Honda, Honda, Honda amazing. Year. Honda have Absolutely. turned it around by the looks like, and I think Renault. Renault factory team, they're looking solid. They are looking I'd very still solid. Big question and fuel loads and stuff like that. I wait till week two. Then no, like we know, Renault. we know, like which teams do it. Like we'll have a lot of teams showboating trying to get a big sponsor. I reckon McLaren are going to come out tomorrow if it's dry and set the time and sheets alight, trying to get a big sponsor. You get some of the smaller teams doing it as well. See, that's what's pointing towards what Finton's saying about Sauber being terrible. They're nowhere in the time sheets, and a team like that, that the, the car's blank. The car's yeah, they won't even give blank. their drivers a Julia. They should go. <laughs> they should go out there and pound in laps and try set a good time, and then there's news stories about them. Then afterwards, when sponsors look at it and say, "Oh, Sauber Alfa Romeo top the time sheets." Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're very high up on the lap count, though. So do you, you know, know that's need, not. Do you know what they need to get? What they need to get a driver with a Latin Rover. And basically, be like drive there and their <laughs> their man find sponsorship. Zach Brown. <laughs> <laughs> what new sponsors have come on board this year? Petrobras has gone to McLaren. Tommy Hilfiger is with Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. I'm very disappointed they didn't do it like. Acronis is gone with both Tara Rosso and Williams. Yeah. Who? Mm. Acronis is their name. What are they? They're a money company of some sort. A money company. Well, think about it. They Formula, Formula One. Money. This, this, this is this thing, right? That irks me about Formula One to an extent. Okay. Is that it's not designed. People, fans are complaining about, oh, there's no sponsorships. This is shit. That's shit. Done shit. If you go to NASCAR, everything's plastered and I don't know. Jim's DIY bolts. McDonald's. 
<laughs> there actually is a team sport. M&M's. Yeah, there's McDon- mm-hmm. McDonald's sponsor, Karen NASCAR. Brilliant. Is it like a as does, Camry? As does Cessna's. Cessna and McDonald's are on the same car. What's Cessna? Cessna like, make light aircraft. They're like the world's largest light aircraft maker. Wow. But what I'm saying is, right, is that Formula One doesn't try and sell things to the audience. It tries and sells them to other businesses. Mm-hmm. It's a business selling yeah. to businesses. Yeah, like you look, look at like Richard Mille on the side of the... Richard Mille. Or maybe it is Richard. It's Richard. It's Ricard Miley. I don't really care to be well, honest. Because M. because there's millionaires listening to their podcast thinking, you know, I'm gonna buy a a Ricky Mealy watch. <laughs> 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 what's what's your opinion of Ferrari losing Santander? They've lost all the wild. That was massive that was loss. no, it's not a massive loss because that was always going to happen. Yeah. But is it Santa, no, no, but Santander hop between is teams. Philip Morris who loses out. No, he buys the livery and then. He sells the livery. No, but what I'm saying is the issue is <laughs> Philip Morris Philip Morris isn't a person. <laughs> no, but like... Uh, <laughs> Philip Morris is, like, is the company. Yeah, but I'm talking about <laughs> Philip Morris is the company, like, Marlborough. Big P-Dog, like. Yeah, yeah Marlborough. Marlborough. <laughs> I carved <him> <laughs> <I carved laughs> <him laughs> the loop. That was very controversial. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Not> so, <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, right, is... Uh, fuck, I even forget now what I was going to say. Cause it was Santander. So yeah, Santander. Santander signs big contracts. That's their issue. They signed a big contract when they went to McLaren because Alonso went... And then Alonso fucked off after one season. Like, Shit, we're stuck with them now. And then they left McLaren and they went to Ferrari when Alonso went there, signed a big contract, and then Alonso fucked off. And they're like, oh, jeez. And then they were good. about to sign for McLaren. And then <laughs> <laughs> and now they're just not sure. like, Because yeah. uh, Alonso's about to fuck off. Yeah. So Will a big team Alonso. sign Alonso? No. Why not? Because he's over the hill because and far away. He's not over the hill. He's like 25. There's still a championship in him. There is a championship if he has the car. Yeah, yeah but who has the car? I mean, he's better than Kimi. (laughs) Or Ferrari. Ferrari. Is there been a Kimi Raikkonen revival? No. No. He looks very fit this year. He looks very motivated. Either fit or he's been doing a lot of drugs. Does he feel feel fit or does he feel that my contract expires at the end of the year again? Yeah, he always has a couple... That's a great way to motivate. He's a one-year moving contract. Can Kimi or Bottas do anything? Yes, I think Bottas could potentially win this championship. No. Yeah, have your shade. You're, no, you are, you are, you you what have you been smoking? You would have said that. You would have said that about Nico. No, no, no. Nico no. Nico was far more competitive. Nico than, can out qualify him. Wait, wait. Nico helped design that car last year. Bot came in in a car that was, had nothing to do with him. He was signed in like five weeks' notice of the season. I yeah. think you're over and, no, exaggerating. Bot is convinced he's going to be Hamilton. He came in. He came in right with like five weeks' notice to the season, mm-hmm. and then runs mm. in the season and effectively he nearly finished third. Did he finish third? I think he stole it from Reagan on the last day, didn't he? <sighs> third. Yeah, he finished third in the championship. Yeah. Well, Finishing the... third in that car is a fucking disgrace. No, Merck wasn't that much better than Ferrari. Okay, to say that Merck was better than Ferrari. Right. They were on pole for 76% of races last year. Yeah, they, they didn't have any Q3 engine modes. modes. That was one think, race. Think about it, right? How fast that Ferrari was at the start of the season. No hope for anybody. Right, so that was giving Bottas time to bed in. Hamilton hit something near the form of his life last season as well. It, so he yeah. helped design the car in the form of his life how are you to expect somebody who's had no part to play in the design of that car to have any way of getting into the season and yet he still managed to finish third in the championship okay let's put let's put it this way one of the all time greats going against the letters no championships mm-hmm. if both of them are at the top of their game mm-hmm. it's Lewis if Bottas came up against Lewis at the best of their game it's, yeah it's Lewis Bottas isn't Lewis will win the thing is though right, I think <coughs> if Bottas was at the top of his game and say if they were winning race for race as the season progresses I think Bottas has a better mental strength to beat Lewis no yeah Lewis, yeah, well, Lewis is a child Rosberg, no, Lewis, Lewis is very mature recently recently the last two years because he's, he's been, been winning good. the last two years he's been very it's mature it's very easy to be happy when you're winning yeah. you've seen Lewis which, when he's losing in the McLaren, you know what Bottas should do he gets rashy he gets erratic he just no. I tell you how Bottas uh, wins this championship. This no. is how Bottas wins this championship. Every day, he sneaks in to Lewis's room and, and takes a pillow. shit in his toilet. <laughs> no, 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 you've double, you've double standards here, right? There's double standards in Formula One. Like I'm a Hamilton fan, yes, but there's double standards where everyone gives out about Hamilton being whingy, but then when Alonso's whingy, everyone praises him. Yeah, we need to finish. Well, Alonso's Spanish. Spanish. That's, That's what he's to supposed to do. Yeah. Okay, so we'll. Okay, so we're starting to run over time here, so we're going to call it. We're going to call it a day. So yeah. we think Honda have nailed it, and we think Renault look good. So that's our take from testing, Honda even though we didn't that. we didn't talk much about testing, but, but yeah, and apparently really Bottas is going to be world champion. Apparently, it apparently. Like two days testing, <laughs> he's currently in the third best car, but he's going to win the world championship. Yes, <laughs> after Alonso wins in Australia. Okay, so so yeah, thanks for tuning in again to 107 percent factual Formula One. 
107% of the facts 107% of the time 107% of bullshit <laughs> but anyway uh, we're available on both YouTube and on Spreaker so be sure to like and subscribe and see you all next week see you next week bye. good luck bye bye shut up and sit down, 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 down.